What's happening geeks and welcome to my second video in my series of updates on my Rick O'Connell cosplay. Now in my first video I unboxed and showed you guys and reviewed the amazing gun holster rig from Todd's Costumes and today my shirt arrived. Now like I said, it's like an aviation slash military shirt. You've got the little panels here to put your gold bars if you're a pilot. Uh, everything seems to be pretty accurate. The only thing is it's not 100% cotton like the one Brendan Fraser wore. Same shit. So today's video is gonna be based on weathering the shirt and also weathering my gun rig. Now in terms of weathering this thing, I'm not going to town on it because in the first Mummy, there's not much weathering going on. Towards the end of the film, there is some soiling, but in terms of a general look, I'm just gonna focus on the outside of the gun rig. Now to weather this, all we're gonna be using is black shoe polish and you just need a normal paintbrush. And also a tissue or paper towel to wipe off the excess. Now since I got this thing, it has become really soft and flexible because I've been handling more because obviously it's newish leather so it's quite stiff. So that's the weathering plan on the holster rig. Now, the shirt itself, I've actually done a little bit of a practice. Don't know if you guys can see it that well just around the collar here. So it's gonna be a mix of brown and black. And what we're gonna be using to weather the shirt, you're gonna need some disposable cheap brushes. Another little brush. Now you're gonna get some black charcoal and some brown pastels. Now, if you're wondering why they're looking like this, I put them in a glad bag and smush them up with a mallet. So it's like a powder now. And of course, because we're working with pastels and charcoal, for God's sakes, wear some gloves, cause it's gonna get messy, baby. Now in terms of weathering the shirt, like the holster rig, I'm not going to town on this. I don't want it to look like Rick O'Connell at the end of the first mummy where everything is just soiled and dirty. Basically the look I'm going for is this shirt has copped a good couple of days in the desert and in the elements. So with that, let's get to it. All right guys, so here we go. We're all set up now, I can't stress this enough, prep is the key, especially when you're doing something as messy as this. You wanna make sure you got something down that's not gonna cause a mess everywhere. And the reason why I'm doing this inside is because charcoal and pastels, once they're ground up, they're a very fine powder and the slightest breeze will blow it everywhere. Possibly in your face, it'll get up in your nose, all up in your eyes, and it's just gross. You'll have black boogers for weeks to come. So, um, the method I'm gonna be using is pretty much sort of like dry brushing. So I'm gonna be dabbing along like this. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do the collar and then I'm gonna turn the camera off and do the rest of the shirt. Hopefully I can get a seamless and um, flush looking weathering all over and not look splotchy like I've done it in certain patches. What I wanna do is put a lot of emphasis on the stitching and on the outer parts, on the edge of the shirt. So especially here where there'd be a lot of sweat and a lot of yellowing and browning, that's what I wanna put emphasis on. So I'm gonna be doing the first layer with brown and following it up with a slight little coat of black all over, just so it's uh, smudged into the fabric. You wanna dab your brush in your little Ziploc bag and it will come out like this and this is what we want. So we just wanna get a little bit on there Slowly rub it around the edges of the shirt and then start to rub it in with your hands and also grab a tissue and start really, really putting some elbow grease in and rubbing that in. Go, okay, beautiful. Just keep going along those edges like so. Like I said, subtlety is the key when doing something like this. You don't wanna just dump all of this stuff onto the shirt and just ruin it and it just won't look natural. So. And it's okay if you get these little bits here, that's fine. Plus this part isn't gonna be seen obviously. Okay, get a bit of black. And again, it'll come out on the top, which is what we want. And just very sparingly, put it over like so. And that's it, that is pretty much how I want this to look, guys. You know, 
just subtle. Like it's been out in the desert for a good couple of days and it's caught the elements. So what I'm gonna do is turn the camera off and do the rest of the shirt and we'll cut back, see how it looks, and then we're gonna start weathering the leather holster rig. Okay guys, now we're on to weathering the leather holster rig. Now, I'm not going overboard with this, like I said, with the shirt. It's pretty much just weathering around the sides here and just where these uh, holes are for the uh, leather lace to go through. So you're just gonna grab your uh, black shoe polish, get a brush. Now I'm running low, so that's why I had to dip it to the very bottom and just wipe off the excess around the edge. And all we're doing is just going around like that on the edges. Make sure to get some on the actual surface of the leather. You can even start dabbing and dry brushing. Now quickly just grab a tissue, wipe the excess away. There's nothing to it guys, just all about subtlety and that's pretty much it. Just to give the effect that, as gross as this sounds, there's probably sweat in there, dirt, sand, you name it, it's in there. So and I'll just go back over these laces, just give a bit of texture to them. Now you want to make sure you're dabbing in a way that it's going to look natural and that's it guys that is literally all you have to do for weathering something like this if you want subtlety and here we go guys here is the end result as you can see some areas really did smudge due to um excess pastels hitting it but that's all good i'm really really happy with how this turned out and actually one of the finishing touches i put on this was sand i rubbed a shitload of sand into this thing so it's legit this thing has been in the sand now whilst i've got it here this is the blue uh scarf that i made just that rick wears uh, towards the end of the film the first film and in the second film it's just like a dust mask sand mask turban everything in one and he just wears it a couple of times in uh, both films so it was just some blue fabric from spotlight there's no real weathering required to it from what i've seen on screen it's just standard blue not really weathered so thanks very much for watching guys if you have any questions about my weathering methods or were unsure of anything please drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts as always thanks very much for your continuing support guys and until next time geeks always remember cosplayers do it best